said, we'll be looking at Laplace transform. We are still on Laplace. Um, initially, when we started, we said, these are the possible functions. These are the possible functions we'll be giving, right? When it comes to Laplace, these are the possible functions we'll be giving. Then, so far, we've been able to transform um, function A. We've been able to transform um, four functions so far, meaning when f of t is equals to a, when f of t is equals to exponential negative a t, when f of t is equals to sine a t, when f of t is equals to cos a t. So we want to transform this last three function. Why are we doing all this? We are doing all this just because as the class proceeds, we are going to be implementing all this. I said it in the previous video, saying we have three theorems. We have three terms, basically. The first term is multiplying by the exponential function. The second one is dividing by t theorem. Then the third one is um, the third one is multiplying by t raised to the power of n. Now, when I said, giving, say you are giving this function, f of t is equal to sine at. Find the Laplace transform of sine at. Don't forget, this is the formula that defines Laplace. You know, the way we got all these guys that you've seen, how do we obtain it? We said, in this case, what my f of t? A. By the time I substitute A here, perform your integral, this will be your answer, right? The next one, this is my f of t, right? By the time you substitute your f of t, which is exponential negative 80, into this integral, you get this. Similarly for sine 80 and cos 80. So this is what we've done so far. Now, we are now saying, given f of t is equal to sine 80, how do we find the Laplace? How do we find the Laplace? In our last class, when we did the Laplace of sine 80 and cos 80, we said it is easier when we um, express trigonometry function as an exponential function, right? You know, normally looking at this integral, I would have used integration by parts, right? Saying that this is my u and this is my what? dv. But when it comes to Laplace, we are making t, we, are, we want to make um, our calculation easy for us, right? I said, when it, comes to, when it comes to Laplace, we want to make our calculation easier for us. Meaning that the same way we did for the previous example, which was sine 80 and cos 80. Now, the question is, do we, do we have any um, expression between, do we have any connection or can we express sine 80 in terms of exponential so as to perform indices then integrate right now this is it recall or note that sine 80 is equals to 1 over 2 all into brackets exponential 80 minus exponential negative 80 meaning instead of um meaning from here i can substitute sine 80 into this um integral function right mind you this um particular transform it has two method this uh, for sine 80 i'll be using the first method i'll be using the first method which is the normal integration process while for cosh 80 i'll be using the faster method right which is the shorter um i'll be using the faster method which is the other method now let's um let's see how it works for me i said call this equation one Right? Substitute equation one into your integral formula. What do you have? Integral, integral from zero to infinity, right? And if I see sine 80, I'm substituting what? Equation one. So I'm adding what? One over two, all into brackets, exponential raised to the power of what? 80 minus exponential raised to the power of negative 80 Close your bracket, multiplying exponential with the power of negative st dt. All right. Now from here, use this to um, use this to multiply this bracket. It becomes what integral from zero to infinity. Mind you, you can factor out this um, constant from integration. I have one over two, right? Meaning I'm saying one over two integral zero to infinity. This multiplied by this. I then have exponential always to the power of 80 multiplying exponential always to the power of negative st, right? Minus exponential always to the power of negative 80 multiplying exponential always to the power of negative st. Close the bracket. Multiply by what? Dt. Multiply by dt. 
all right now from here we said up to this level don't forget i want to integrate right all of this i'm integrating it but i can actually write this in a better way right now I'll, before integrating we call from a this is a raised to the power of m times a raised to the power of n it becomes what a raised to the power of m plus n right similarly I'm having exponential always to the power of 80 multiplying exponential always to the power of negative st. It becomes what? Exponential exponential always to the power of 80 plus all into brackets negative st. Right? Meaning I'm having exponential always to the power of 80 minus st. You observe that t is common. It becomes what? Exponential always to the power of a minus x only to bracket c but we can also write this as what exponential negative only to bracket x minus a multiplying c true or false by the time you by the time we time this you still have this power you know we've uh, we've seen a concept behind this the reason why we need to write um we've seen the concept behind this the reason why we need to have our power in this manner the whole idea is that your s your s is converging meaning in this case your s has the greater meaning in this case the value of your s is bigger than a or must be bigger than a so you writing it in this manner is not correct so follow this other one we've seen all of this previously all right meaning back to this integral function it becomes what one over two integral zero to infinity the product of this we then substitute this right meaning exponential always to the power of negative all into bracket s minus a exponential always to the power of negative s minus a t minus same idea for this what do you have exponential negative all into bracket s plus a multiplying t true or false this time this you have by the time you open all this, you still have what you have here, right? Multiplying what? The t. Multiplying the t. Any question before we proceed? Any question? Now, from here, up to this level, I can integrate, right? I can integrate. Recall, when it comes to um, integration, integral of k, integral of exponential, always the power of kx, dx. It becomes k. It becomes exponential always to the power of k over k plus c, right? Any question? In integration, when you have this, when you have integral of exponential always to the power of k multiplying x, this is what you have. So implementing this same idea, implementing this same idea. Let's take it individually, meaning we are going to integrate this and we are also going to what, integrate this, right? Don't forget your limit. You know, this is definite integral. You are having lower and upper limits. But then let's take this first. Let's take this first. So what do you have? You are having exponential always to the power of negative all into bracket s minus a multiplying t all divided by what? All divided by minus all into bracket s minus a right this is for the first one moving on we are having minus the same way we integrated this integrate this it becomes what exponential all into, uh, exponential all to power of minus all into bracket s plus a all divided by negative s plus a right from here, let's write this in a better way. Meaning, or let's write this in a nicer way. I then have all into brackets exponential negative s minus a t all divided by negative s minus a minus times minus. What do you have? Plus. Meaning plus exponential all to the power of negative s plus a all divided by what? S plus a. Introducing your limit, you have zero towards infinity, right? From zero to infinity. Any question on this? 
Yeah, we do, we are going to okay. Let's include it one over two. All right. Now from here, the the way um infinity works, you know, you want to substitute your lower and upper limit. You are substituting this um upper limit, then followed by what lower limit. Now from here, anywhere you see t, you are substituting your upper limit. Okay, you have t here. This is t. You have t. Anywhere you see what infinity, you are substituting. Anywhere you see t, you are substituting it as what infinity. One over two, on into brackets. I'm taking this infinity. Infinity is taking all of the um function, right? Minus then minus then the lower limit follows. So I'm having exponential. I'm having what exponential always to the power of negative x minus a multiplying infinity, right? Divided by negative x minus a plus what do you have? Exponential negative s minus plus a multiplying infinity or divided by what? Or divided by s plus what a? All right. This is just for the um, upper limit, right? Minus all into brackets exponential always the power of what? S minus a multiplying zero or divided by this plus exponential always the power of S plus a multiplying zero or divided by what? S plus a. Any question on this? Now from here, let's multiply. Let's multiply this. So for this one, any you know by time you multiply this. Saying negative all into brackets s minus a multiplying infinity, you have what infinity, right? The idea of infinity is that multiplying infinity with a particular number, you still have you know, infinity itself is a larger number, so you multiply a larger number by a small number or by any number, you still have what very large number. So this multiply by this, you have infinity. So meaning up to this level, I'm having what one over two. All into bracket exponential always to the power of infinity divided by s minus a plus exponential always to the power of infinity divided by s plus a minus all into bracket this time this now give us what zero meaning among what exponential always to the power of zero minus all into bracket x minus a plus exponential always power of zero divided by s plus a all right now from here take note exponential raised to the power of infinity you have what zero exponential raised to the power of infinity what do you have zero exponential raised to the power of infinity i'm having what zero meaning i have i have one over two all into bracket zero or divided by negative x minus a plus zero or divided by s plus a so the bracket right minus all into bracket one or divided by negative s minus a plus one or divided by s plus a right then from here what do you have this don't forget all of these they are in a big bracket right all of these are in a big bracket you have one about two outside you are going to include that later right now from here meaning i have zero one about two all into bracket zero plus zero right minus time this becomes what one it becomes zero plus zero minus times this what do i have plus one or divided by x minus a right minus times this negative one or divided by s plus a so let's solve this i then have one about two all into brackets 
1 or divided by x minus a minus 1 or divided by s plus a right so let's solve this we solving this what do we have i have 1 over 2 all into brackets what the lcm you know this is difference of two square right so i have but let's bring it out saying x minus a x plus a from here it becomes this divided by this you are left to what x plus a multiplying this you have what s plus a similarly this divided by this you are left to what x minus a multiplying that minus s minus x minus a right any question on this from here let's open our bracket it becomes what 1 over 2 all into bracket s plus a this time this negative x plus a difference of two square right s square minus a square close your bracket you observe that this cancel out i'm left with what one over two all into bracket two a over s square minus a square right from here simplify this cancel out you are left with what a over s square minus a square therefore the Laplace transform of shine AT is equal to what? A over S squared minus A squared. Back to your table, right? A all divided by S squared minus A squared. Now, what are you, you know, I said it previously that the um, trigonometric function and the hyperbolic function, their Laplace transform are similar, right? Now, check the Laplace transform of sine 80 and sine 80. What's the difference? The minus. In the denominator of my sine 80, it is what? Plus. But for sine 80, I have what? Negative. Now, without solving your cos 80, that will be what? That will be what? Without going through this process, cos 80 becomes what? X all divided by S squared minus a squared yeah that's correct that's correct but in this case the same way we've solved for shine 80 see the same process for cosh 80 but i said we have a faster method right i said we have a um faster way to go about it so let's see how we solve for um cosh 80. any questions so far i said up to this level we have a faster way to go about what cosh 80. now let's see how it works Let's solve for cosh 80. Example. Let's take example. Find the Laplace transform of shine 3t. Find the Laplace transform of shine 40. What we answer? Implementing what we did so far to these examples, to these two examples. Find the Laplace transform of shine 3t and for shine 40. What's the answer? For the first one, all you need to do, come back to your um, standard table of Laplace. Do comparison, right? Now, from here, this is the Laplace transform of shine 80. Now, given this question, the Laplace transform becomes what? 3. The first one, what do you have? 3 all divided by what? S squared minus 9 right meaning three square then number two the laplace transform what do you have four four are divided by s square minus what 16. can you see how it works now imagine you um you don't know the laplace transform of shine 80. meaning for every question given to you you have to go through the process of you solving the integration Meaning what? You have to go through the process of you solving the um, integral function. So with this our table, it saves us stress. It saves us time. Just come back to your table. What is the Laplace transform of shine 80? Substitute values, right? Now let's solve for cosh 80. Let's solve for cosh 80. 